One of the really powerful things about Autoplay Media Studio 5.0 is the ability to interact with a web server. So for example in this model that we're looking at here you've got an application which you've published from Autoplay Media Studio and distributed to an end user. They're running the application on their computer and in turn the application is accessing a web server such as your website and it can create one or two way data interaction here with your website. So for example on our website we could have a database or a server-side scripting language, um, any type of thing to interact with your script. Um, in this particular case we're looking at how you can use a uh, server-side scripting language to run scripts, process scripts, and access a remote database. We're using PHP MySQL for our model since that's a typically used solution. It's a professional solution and it's free and a lot of people are using it but you could uh, apply the same principles to ASP, JSP, Perl, any other type of language. In this case I've used CGI as a general label here. PHP is in fact a type of CGI, so Common Gateway Interface Language, and that's a server-side language. And in this case of course we're using Apache Web Server, which is widely used, but again you could apply this to another type of server system. The main point is to um, learn the concepts behind how we interact with remote scripts. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, some of the examples that this might apply to. For example, if you were going to have a credit card ordering page in your application, you would want to have a secure uh, system set up. So in that case, you would set up a secure page on your server and serve it in your application via a web browser object. And in that way, you would be able to uh, transfer the credit card data securely. So there's a, a plenty of examples where you would want to use a web server in conjunction with your application. But suffice to say, it's an easy task, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at what PHP is and what MySQL is, and then we'll go through and create some examples. We'll get this installed on our system, and we'll start working with it. So, what is PHP? PHP is a CGI, server-side scripting language. That stands for Common Gateway Interface. And again, this is uh, similar to the other examples we looked at earlier. PHP is free, it's easy to learn, and it's easy to use. Most people that start using PHP are shocked at how easy to learn it is. It's very, very easy to learn, even if you have never done any programming before. And there's a lot of free tutorials and whatnot on uh, Google or on the Internet. So it's definitely worth downloading a copy of PHP. And in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how you can get PHP and install it on your system very quickly. PHP is powerful, secure, and modular. Again, we were discussing that a little bit earlier, the security f feature. If you want to be able to process uh, secure information uh, or do encryption so forth, PHP is a very good solution. It's very powerful in that PHP can do pretty much anything that most CGI languages can do. So you can create all sorts of powerful interaction. You can even create flash movies and PDF files on the fly using PHP. So it's extremely functional. If you go on the internet and do a search on Google, you'll see some examples of what PHP can do and uh, you'll find that it's, it's quite amazing. PHP is modular, which means that you can expand it at any time. There's a, a lot of people out there creating modules for PHP, and because PHP is open source, you can download those modules for free and just install them on your server. Some of the example modules, incidentally, include things like encryption, um, math functions, and so forth. PHP is similar to ASP, that's Active Server Pages, uh, by Microsoft, Perl, CGI, and again here we use that as a common label for any type of CGI. Perl is a type of CGI, as is PHP. Um, JSP, which is Java Server Pages, that's increasing, increasingly popular nowadays. It's a very good solution. Um, Python, and so forth. So these are different examples of server-side scripting languages that are similar to PHP, and you can use those interchangeably with PHP with the principles we're teaching here. PHP is not similar to JavaScript, VBScript, DHTML, which is dynamic HTML, and so forth. These are servers, uh, these are client-side rather languages that um, execute on the user's machine, as opposed to the server-side languages here in point four, which execute on the server. So the main difference between these sets of languages is that one set of languages like ASP, PHP, Perl, JSP, those execute on a server and then the functionality from that is returned to your application. Whereas with JavaScript, VBScript, and DHTML, the actual CPU work is done on the local user's machine. So the difference there is going to be that with PHP, it, it's going to use the resources on your website or your server, wherever that is. Whereas with JavaScript, it's going to use the resources on the local user's machine. So if you have applications that are heavy duty on math, 
or some other type of functionality that you think might slow down your server, or if you have a slow server, you might want to think about porting some of those over to JavaScript and let your user's machine do the work. But typically, PHP is very, very fast and efficient, and you can get away with an awful lot of stuff. So I think that uh, you probably ostensibly won't run into the limits of what PHP can do in the course of creating uh, simple business applications and whatnot. Now let's look at what MySQL is. MySQL is a professional database server. So this is one example of a professional database. There's several types, uh, but MySQL is one specific kind. MySQL is free, easy to learn, and easy to use. Much like PHP, MySQL is really easy to install, to learn, and to use. Most people that start up with MySQL are surprised at how easy it is to learn vis-a-vis um, -vis how powerful it is. So it's a great way to get started with the database and it is a truly professional database server so that means if you've got a small business or some type of application you're using you're not going to need to go up to a larger database later you can use MySQL to cover pretty well any typical small business or medium-sized business applications MySQL is typically accessed via scripting language such as PHP um, you can also access your databases uh, via ASP, JSP and all these other languages and that's that's the typical way you would do it. So PHP is not specific here, but the main point is that typically we're accessing uh, the MySQL database via some type of scripting language. Okay, so that's how we're going to read and write information to and from the database and access information. MySQL is similar to other database solutions such as DBase, My MySQL, sorry. Oracle, Postgres, and etc. There's a, a whole host of uh, database solutions out there, server-side database solutions, and you can use these concepts interchangeably with those solutions. The basic gist of what we're teaching here is how to read and write from a database, how to access data, and so forth, but the specific syntax for your database may vary slightly. We're just looking at PHP and MySQL here because it happens to be a free, easy-to-access solution. MySQL is not similar to JavaScript or VBScript databases and there's plenty of these on Google for example if you were running a application on a machine that didn't have access to the internet you would probably want to rely on some type of a JavaScript database solution if you needed a database on the end users machine because it doesn't need to be installed you can just typically go ahead and run that from your application in the case of MySQL it needs to be installed somewhere on a machine in this case on our website or web server um, Typically, for any professional database solution, that's going to be the case. You're going to need to install that database engine on a computer somewhere. And typically, um, you're probably not going to want to install the database engine itself on the end user's machine, although it's possible, and you can run things that way. Okay, so we'll look at the final summary of what we've learned here, and that is that we've got a database on a server here, in this particular case, Apache, and it's a MySQL database and then we've got a client-side uh, end user here who's running our application and they're communicating back and forth with our web server and we're doing that via PHP in this case so let's go ahead on to the next lesson and learn how to install PHP and MySQL and then we'll jump right in and get going with some examples